welcome to another video blog of Journey to the Last Frontier. I hope everybody's uh, doing well. Today is going to be a slightly different type of a video. We're going to be talking about hurricane preparation, particularly for all of the thousands, many thousands of people that have moved during the pandemic from up north or out west down to Florida, whether it be South Florida, the west coast of Florida, anywhere along the, the Gulf Coast of the United States or even the, the southeastern seaboard. Hurricane season is from uh, June 1 to November 30th. Sometimes storms happen earlier, sometimes they come later. I'm going to walk you through all the things that a new person or somebody who just needs a refresher to go through on how to prepare for this 2022 hurricane season. I have lived through many many hurricanes, tropical storms, uh, including Hurricane Andrew in 1992, Hur Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Wilma, multiple uh, tropical storms. So I'm going to share with everybody today a thing or two that I have learned because I have seen a thing or two. Okay, so first thing is 90%, if not more, of uh, people are not ready for hurricane season and they're not ready for a storm until we're well in the cone and that's when you see everybody on TV rushing to the supermarket or rushing to Home Depot getting last minute supplies. I'm here today to tell you how to do that in a planned way that will be safe for you and your family and your wallet so you're not going to get hit with last minute price surges and things like that. So 90% of the people don't have a plan. And if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. Problem with a hurricane or a, or a major tropical storm, failure is not an option because it could lead to serious harm to yourself, your family, up to and including death. So what is we? what do we have to do? While everybody is scrambling, getting those last minute supplies, if you follow this video, look at the link in the description for all of the instructions on what to do. It will be very detailed from a recent blog post on Journey to the Last Frontier. You could sit back and relax. Maybe not relax because a storm is coming, but you can certainly sit back and kind of watch, watch the chaos around you and, and do some last minute preps. So first off, what are my current preps? What do I have? I keep minimum 30 gallons of potable water in the house, okay, in large jugs and I'm going to show you back behind me here I have samples of a lot of my hurricane preps okay and I'll also have photos and whatnot online I keep another 55 gallons on the other side of the backyard in a rain barrel which is easy to uh, use for potable water if you uh, boil it or uh, treat it um, I keep emergency of food supply for 30 days for humans and dogs now FEMA tells you you need 72 hours worth of food, which is which is a good start. Don't get me wrong. If you have no food, 72 hours of reserve food is definitely better than no reserve food. Going through all my years of experience, I could tell you that we have had no power on multiple occasions for two or more weeks. And sometimes it's more than a week before you can even get to um, a place where you can buy food or a food bank or whatnot. 30 days emergency supply of food for both man and beast per person is what we have at our house. If I was going to just advise somebody, especially if they had um, a small apartment or a condo, not a lot of storage space, seven days food supply per person as well as dogs or cats would be uh, the minimum that I would prepare for based on my personal experience. Now, most people in, in Florida have um, gas, I'm sorry, most, most people in Florida have electric ranges. We have electric, we also have microwave. So how are you gonna cook this food and warm up your food? Camping stove, and we'll show you and walk you through two different types of camping stoves that you could have. Now, power is a big thing that goes out in a, in a hurricane. And sometimes it could be out for uh, days to weeks. The average that I have experienced here in, in South Florida in Miami-Dade County is up to two weeks. The longest we had no power was three weeks. Make sure you have ample batteries, flashlights, candles, solar-powered 
batteries as well as other uh, emergency lighting which I again will show you when we walk through all of that material I also have backup solar charges for all of my personal electronics iPhones iPads and the like those things are really critically important in order to stay in touch with uh, friends family loved ones the news etc so I keep all my preps in a in uh, watertight orange camo bags they're bright orange uh, so I, they're all labeled so I know where my batteries my flashlights my matches candles uh, hurricane essentials are everyone is labeled I have a green one that is tactical and self-defense okay so all of those preps are kept in a safe place um, and each is labeled accordingly so now you bought all the stuff you need and again, there, there will be links in this um, in, in the video description. So what's the checklist? What do you do when you know a storm is coming or you hear something on the radio, the TV, uh, uh, an alert on your phone? What is it that you do? And here's here's the plan that I have put together, put the test and I have revised several times based on learned experiences from previous storms. Uh, also, feel free to modify this to suit your own personal needs, budgets, etc. So, here we are. Hurricane Prep 101. These are guidelines, like I said, that have worked for me. You may need to change them, which is perfectly fine. This is just what works for me and my family living in Coral Gables, Florida. So, we are a, a little less than a month out from hurricane season. Now is this time, the time to start getting all of your preps in gear buy what you need in May okay so one month before hurricane season buy all the stuff you need okay batteries flashlights candles matches etc etc food water containers all of that so when a storm is announced and you know you're five days in the cone of uncertainty okay make sure this is what you have to do when you're five days in the cone check all your supplies that you have Okay, this is the time if you need to update anything, update food, gas for your, both of your cars or both of our cars or how many cars you have, water, dog, cat food, pet food, paper goods are critically important as we learned during the pandemic, toilet paper, paper towels, meds, make sure you have minimum two week supply of medication. If you need more, let's, then go for it. Three days inside the cone. Top off all of your water. Make sure you have at least five gallons per person. Okay, we have way more than that. Top off any food, food stuff, at least minimum, like I said, seven days per person. Okay, top off any first aid supplies that you're, you need, including medication. If critically important, get cash. Okay, minimum 200 bucks if you can afford that. More if, if needed. Small bills, five, tens, and twenties. Uh, after a hurricane when there's no power you're living in a cash based society if you think you're gonna get a uh, access to an ATM machine you are f wrong if you think that you're gonna be able to pay people by Zelly or Venmo or whatnot when you're trying to buy emergency supplies when there is no power you're wrong it is cash is king in a post hurricane no power situation okay now two days in the cone now you got to start getting really ready okay you know this is coming you don't know exactly where landfall is going to be and you don't really kind of know how strong it will be it could strengthen it could weaken as it approaches uh, landfall. it could also miss you completely okay if you have a garage prepare the garage okay that is something where you can move your patio furniture to some other things that you need secure all outdoor stuff Okay, if you can't move it, secure it, including barbecues, heavy furniture, umbrellas. You may need to put those down. Secure as much as you can. Fully charge everything that is chargeable. Okay, power tools, solar batteries, all of that. Okay, make uh, ice. Make, take gallon jugs of water and freeze them as a solid block. Okay, if it's a plastic jar, a plastic gallon, it's not going to burst. It'll expand a little bit. These things will, these blocks of ice will keep the refrigerator or cooler 
uh, colder longer without power. Okay, so make the ice. Wash all your laundry. Okay, again, if you lose power or lose water, you want to have clean clothes. So get all your laundry done two days in the cone. Okay, uh, check your generator. Make sure it works. Make sure it has oil and gas. And if you need to evacuate, if you live in a flood zone, we live in a flood zone. We are 800 meters from the bay, less than that. Uh, so that's the time where you have to flip the switch. Are you evacuating or not? Okay, so that's what happens when you're two days in the cone. What happens when you're one day or the day of based on the time of the impact? Well, first off, what I do is, I, I did, you know, the one day or, or the day of, depending on the time of impact, I move all our preps into place, pre-position everything. The, the orange ammo cans, candles, flashlights, and make sure that every room there's a flashlight, candles, so if we lose power, it's, you, you're not stumbling in the dark looking for where things are. Okay, I have water and food ready. Okay, I, I double check all my self-defense systems and I'm not gonna go into what those are, but we're well prepared for any contingency uh, after a storm. Okay, we live in a flood zone. I do deploy uh, my flood storm surge system. Uh, that has not only worked, it has saved my house when my neighbors were flooded. We did not have water enter our house. I will show you uh, what those are. Okay, pre as I mentioned, pre-position your flashlights and candles and pre-position uh, any communication devices uh, that you need. I have my, obviously we all have our cell phones, but I also have a handheld ham radio and a, a handheld CB radio. So those things are really important. And I can listen in on emergency channels and see what's happening. And finally, and this is a, le a lesson learned the hard way, we have electric curtains in the house. So if you keep them, whatever position they're in, you lose power. That's what position they will stay in. So I, I kind of adjust them and keep them at a, at a reasonable height so we can come in and out of the doors, but also not let uh, the sunlight come in. That is the uh, preparations that one needs and the timeline from five days out in the cone. Now, let's go take a look at some of the items that I've been talking about that you need and I'll demonstrate some of them as well. Here are some of the sample supplies that we have talked about in the video, okay, previously. And here you can see are the ammo cans. Uh, this one here is flashlights and batteries and this one down here is matches and candles. They're both filled with exactly what is on the label. All right, so this here is a three and a half gallon potable water jug, okay? And it's stackable. It kind of built almost like Lego bricks. So you can see I have five of these stacked as well as additional uh, water containers. Uh, sealed, I have a spout. So this is absolutely great, easy to carry. A little on the heavy side, it is three and a half gallons, but that stays in the garage. As you can see here, now we have different flashlights. This is a lantern, okay, easy to turn on, easy to turn off, has a hand crank, okay, so you, you, could, you can charge it that way, you can hang it up if you need, and it has a USB uh, charge, okay, no batteries. Two different types of flashlights, this is a uh, maglite, has a... Uh, it's a little, it's bright, but you can't really see it outside. And this one here is a Husky flashlight from Home Depot. This takes uh, double A's, okay? So a nice bright light, very light. These are easy to pre-position. These are kind of heavy to carry around, but they're, they're good backup lights. This light here is awesome. This is a solar powered light. You can see here is the solar, the solar panel this charges via the sun it has a hand crank just like the uh, lantern it also has a usb port so you can charge that uh, from a charger you have your buttons on this side you have uh, your buttons here you can see floodlight spot and red okay so if we press flood you can see this one over here comes on at different levels 
spot is the spotlight here okay and then the red is a a red a red light so this, this is awesome I have I have a few of these items okay they're really really important to have um, safety light sticks are really great actually I've used these by uh, snapping these and uh, you can hang them in the hallway so you don't need to have flashlights or lights in the hallway you can also attach them to a dog collar so you can keep an eye on your dogs this one here is also goal zero which are these other two products and this is a small solar panel uh, that can be used to charge your electronics phone etc if you don't have electricity so these are just some of the items that we talked about in the video all right moving on very self-explanatory i have hundreds of these non-scented tea candles you definitely want them non-scented okay these get pre-positioned around the house i have several of these 115 hour candles these are great there's kind of like a, a kerosene or um, a lighting fluid in there obviously you are going to need matches and uh, cigarette lighters okay we're going to get to this here in a moment but let's continue going this way here and we talked about not having electricity for cooking so here is one camping stove and here is the fuel that it takes it's a butane fuel so one burner you can certainly buy a two burner stove you take it out of the, the plastic case the fuel goes right in here and you can see here is all the controls this is great for uh, boiling water under a boil water um, alert again you should have plenty of potable water available so you can use this for cooking but this is great also just for boiling water as well as making eggs or whatever else that you want to make okay once you cook your water uh, boil your water rather you're going to want to have coffee if you're like me this here is a camping french press so it just makes perfect coffee you put the water and the coffee grinds in in here and slowly plunge that baby down and while everybody else is going through caffeine withdrawals after the hurricane you are having a nice hot um, uh, mug of coffee all right we have here is another camping soap i mentioned we have two so this one here is obviously a little bigger and this one here is a self-contained unit so let, let's let's uh, set this up so I can show you exactly what we're talking about. All right, so this here is a self-contained unit. So you can open the top and you can take out the, uh, the fuel area. Okay, take out the fuel. You put the fuel in here as such. Okay, obviously you would, you would take it out of this. You would fill this up with water. And voila, you are in business. You have a camping stove that you can cook soup, boil water, or whatever you need to do. And these are the little fuel cells. I have um, two boxes of these, plenty, plenty of fuel cells. And I have uh, more than a month's supply of butane fuel for this baby. All right, so um, let's take a look here at the quick dam uh, flood barrier. I have uh, enough of these barriers to go around the all the perimeter openings of the house. The garage door, the side door, the front door, the patio door, the doors to the pool. Uh, these uh, absorb water and they contain and divert water. You could ho you could lay them out flat and just wait for the storm to come, but then they could you could they could blow away. The best thing to do is literally hose it down it'll it'll quickly expand and then you place them by the openings i place them too high and that way it really protects the openings of the house and as i mentioned earlier in the video we had a flood in this neighborhood and my next door neighbor to me had six inches of water in their house and thousands of dollars of damage we had zero inches of water in our house and zero dollars of damage um, cost me five six hundred dollars to uh, completely 
take care of the perimeter of the house. Uh, I, if you live in a flood zone, absolutely the probably the best investment you can make besides having federal flood insurance. So that here is some of what we talked about on the uh, basic supplies to get through uh, a hurricane. If you are prepared and you have all of the stuff that we talked about, even most of the stuff that we talked about, and you're new to um, living in the hurricane uh, coastal areas, you'll be well, well prepared. And when other people are scrambling at the last minute, you could take uh, a deep breath and realize that you've done all that you could do. And uh, now it's just really up to God and nature of what happened. So be safe this hurricane season if you live in uh, a hurricane prone area.